Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Atlanta Business Radio, and this is going to be a fun one. I have with me today, Sally King Benedict. She's an artist here in Atlanta. Welcome to the show. Hi, Lee. Thank you for having me. Well, so, Sally, before we get into things, let us know about your artwork. What kind of artist are you? I would say I'm an abstract expressionist, and I typically work on paintings for the most part. I've done a little bit of sculpture work, but I'm really an intuitive painter. So I don't come in the studio with a plan every day. I I usually just kind of go with my gut and how I'm feeling and then go from there depending on the project or the exhibit or if I've got time to experiment. Now, let's talk a little bit about how you got into this. I know there's a lot of people out there who are passionate about being a creative or an artist in whatever form that may take. How did you make the leap into making it kind of a career and a business? Yeah, I get that question a lot. And, you know, it is a risky step into the world of selling artwork um, when it is your passion and it's always been a hobby and it's just it was the one thing I have always known. And basically in college, I was really encouraged and I had a great couple professors behind me in my studio art program in College of Charleston. And, you know, I worked for some really creative minded people while I was in college and, and they encouraged me to stay with my painting. Um, And basically you know, I had these incredible supportive people around me and I had my first show right out of college. And from there, I knew that I wanted to be in control of my own creative process and work for myself. So I was willing to to eat ramen noodles for a year and, you know, try to figure things out. And things are things were so different then. That was about 11, 12 years ago and we didn't have social media and all of this stuff. So, you know, it was more building a website, cold calling galleries, you know, showing up with a portfolio and um, just getting your foot in the door however possible and hopefully just spreading it through, you know, word of mouth, getting, getting people in front of it. So Charleston was a great place to um, nurture that beginning for me because it was small and, you know, very, very supportive. Now, do you have any advice for a creative out there who's maybe just starting out? How do they go about even like pricing their work? I was always curious about this because art is so subjective and it it can't be kind of materials. It has to be some subjective kind of pricing structure. How do you kind of figure out what the appropriate price is for any piece of artwork? I there there are a few factors that you know I take into consideration. First things first, you can never really go down on your prices. Um, that's always what I learned from the very beginning is you can only really go up. So you have to be careful not to start high. Um, there's a fine line between you know being too low where people might think it's not not worth much because it doesn't cost much, and then you know on the other hand, if you price it too high, it's you know, you, you run into the same kind of problem. It doesn't sell. And then, you know, you can't go back down again. So I price based off of predominantly size medium. And then from there, you know, you factor in really how much, how much time um, it could take, which is, which is a smaller factor. But, you know, my, my advice would be to, to start off lower than maybe, you want to, and then just, you know, stay in the same price range for six months to a year. You don't really want to go up, you know, rapidly. That, that would be my advice. Now, Pricing's hard. <laughs> yeah, because, um, I don't know, the creative people... And that's where, I, yeah, I rely... Sorry. So you, do you rely on, like, kind of the galleries giving you advice? Maybe your mentors are kind of giving you a ballpark to start with? Exactly. Yeah, I was going to say that um, in the beginning, for sure. And I still rely on them because they know the market, too. I, I do most of my sale, sales directly, and I work a lot with my own clients, and I always have. But, you know, 
there are people that are so familiar with pricing and what the market's doing out there that, um, yeah, my ga- the galleries that I work with are great for that. And then I have a couple mentors that I bounce. You know, I started off with that help. I certainly didn't start the prices on my own. I had a lot of help with that, and I still do. So now, how do you recommend artists kind of navigate this kind of crisis we're in here um, with the coronavirus? Is that something that impacts your business, or do you have just like super fans that say, look, I'm just whatever Sally puts out, I'm going to get, and so I don't really, it doesn't matter to me that there's coronavirus or not. If she has something new, I'm just going to buy it. I wish, I mean, this situation is such a transition, I think, for everybody. I, you know, I've been sensitive to my clientele and and the fact that, you know, fine art is one of the first things that probably gets knocked off the list when people are starting to watch what they're spending. And I know we are. So, you know, I'm trying to maintain um, the smaller work for people that, you know, have always been in the market for them. And then also um, kind of keep the morale, the morale and um, the art energy up in other ways right now. I'm, I'm not as focused on selling. I mean, I, I, I need to sell, but I don't want to, you know, be too in your face with it as I think, you know, we all have to be sensitive right now. It's going on. So I'm maintaining those smaller pieces. And, you know, if anybody's out there that wants to still purchase and do a commission and, um, I'm obviously available for that and it's, and it's still going. I just, um, I'm trying to get creative with, um, creating some other products like the coloring book pages where people can download them for free at home right now. Or, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm creating print to help raise some money for Meals on Wheels currently. So those things, the print will be available soon. Um, the coloring pages are on my website now. And yes, I mean, I see an effect, I see a slowdown, um, you know, on my sales, but I also haven't been putting as much out there as I'm trying to be sensitive to. So hopefully, hopefully, um, in the next few weeks, I can, you know, keep up, keep up with, um, with the demand that I think is still there. So, um, I'm just, we're just going to see it's different. I have to work at home now. So that's a little bit different. <laughs> now, it, it, during this time, this is an opportunity because you want to k- still stay out there and keep your name and your brand out there to let people know, right. hey, I still exist. That, you know, today might not be the day they're going to invest in a big purchase, but just remember, I'm still out there. And by creating that kind of um, ubiquity by offering free coloring pages or uh, some donations where you're raising funds for uh, good causes that serve your marketplace. That's all good strategies for any business uh, to still stay relevant during Mm -hmm. a time when maybe people aren't buying as much, but you're still seen as a good citizen uh, that you're out there trying to help in whatever way you can. Right. And you're certainly looking at your phone or on your computer a lot more now then, you know, I mean, everybody is, you know, online. And so you have to keep that captivated audience and exactly kind of navigate a new way to um, engage your clients or sell your work. Or, I mean, you know, small businesses are doing a great job supporting one another right now. And, um, you know, I think everybody is sort of sharing that love and, and showing that there are other things happening that are bigger than us, but still, doing what we do best. And, you know, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing happening, but yes, staying present on social media, even when you're not feeling like it some days right now, you know, I think is definitely a very important thing to do. Now, how did you um, kind of protect the love of art and painting from like it being, oh, now I got to paint something because it's my job because now I need to pay the mortgage. Like, how do you kind of, <laughs> you know, um, separate the maybe the therapeutic value of doing art and the passion of doing art away from the kind of the, I don't want to say factory like, but like the, the that to, I got to yeah. do it because now I got to, you know, it'd be great if I can sell three more pieces this year. Yeah, that is, you know, I I used to struggle with that a lot more. It is still a daily thing, but I I can really compartmentalize these days. And um, 
I know where I can push and, um, you know, maybe create stuff on my own and do some smaller pieces and that are more approachable for, you know, a younger collector, let's say, or somebody that doesn't want to spend a lot on a big, big painting. Um, so I have those ways of, of, of doing that while also finishing up custom pieces for commissions and, you know, um, pieces for shows. I mean, the commissions are great because it's guaranteed and I try to, you know, get those projects finished and those I can rely on more than anything else, I guess. And, and I enjoy doing them. I, I really don't not enjoy doing any of it really is because, you know, there's things I have to do, of course, but I'm still doing what I love to do. And, and then there's things I'm trying for the first time and putting those out there and, you know, maybe they're successful, maybe they're not, but I'm, I have these other things going on that I know I'm going to get paid for. So I think the commission market has been, it's been a love hate sort of relationship in the big, it was, but now, you know, I love it because I love to, I love a challenge. I love to create something for somebody um, that wants a custom piece. You know, it's, I love working with clients that way and I've never, I've never had, you know, a failed attempt. So, you know, a lot of artists don't do commissions because maybe they feel it takes away from their own creative progress or, you know, evolution. And, um, I, you know, I think it's a, it's a great way to balance out a business and actually the number side of it. And that's sort of the way I look at it. So, I never don't enjoy what I'm doing. It's a lot of work sometimes, but I definitely enjoy, I, I enjoy the end product. I enjoy delivering to people and making them happy. So it all, it's all worthwhile. So now, um, how do you, um, like you develop a style, I guess, over time and it evolves based on whatever's in your life at, at that time. I'm sure that influences it somewhat. Do you ever have kind of this, alternate persona that's like you know like uh some of the writers are like you know um like jk rowling had the whole harry potter but then she had like a pseudonym that she was publishing other work under do you have like kind of uh, an outlet like for you to try like crazy wacky things that may not fit under the umbrella of the aesthetic that you've developed you know i've i've thought about that actually having a kind of pin name and, and putting all this wacky stuff out there under that. <laughs> I still, I still may do it. I haven't done it, but I certainly think about it because, you know, when you want to put something new and kind of crazy and off, I mean, sort of off brand, and that's not a great word, but you know, off style maybe because it's brand new and nobody's really seen it ever before. And you sort of keep these things private. Um, other things tend to sort of trumpet, you know, it, it's hard when you're running a business and you're, and you, and you have to make a career out of it and you have to get paid for these things. I mean, you know, is it important to put out what, you know, people love and that you love as well, or, you know, is, or do you put a lot of time and effort into putting stuff out there that you, you just don't know about? And I try to incorporate those things for sure. Cause I think it's important for people to see that, um, I can do other things. A lot of times I feel like people put me in a box of just doing faces or something like that. And I, and I love to be known for that, but I also, I do want to share this other side of me. Um, and a lot of times I do that through collaborations, but I should do it more often. Honestly, I should just, it's kind of a, a, a brave thing. I, I maybe don't feel confident enough, you know, some days to put it out there. I talk myself out of it. <laughs> So, you know, I, it's, that, that's just the confidence thing. I think every artist probably, you know, in every field can can relate to that. So I should put it out there, maybe under a pen name. <laughs> baby steps. Take baby steps. Try, try to put it under yeah. like, a, you know, a, a relative or your kid's name and then uh, just expand from there. <laughs> The, um, exactly. I, I have a question for you. Um, I, I heard this, uh, obviously in my line of work, I do, I talk to a lot of experts in a lot of areas, but I heard this and let me mm -hmm. know if you think this is accurate. When children are super young, uh, like kindergarten, if they say who's an artist, every kid raises their hand. But when they get to like fifth grade, it's only the kid that can draw 
raises their hand. Like everybody else kind of right. uh, doesn't consider themselves an artist anymore. Has that been your experience? And then what can we do to kind of encourage people to embrace art, maybe not as a career, but just as something that they should be doing from just as therapy, it's a good outlet, and to embrace right. the creativity in their life? Yeah, I do think you're totally accurate in that. And I remember that growing up. And, you know, I, it's sad to see that some kids just kind of stop raising their hands or, you know, I think when you get to a certain age, you know, first grade, my son's in first grade and, you know, he's starting to compare himself to his peers. You know, they don't, in kindergarten, I guess, whatever, but around first and second grade, I think something happens and children start comparing themselves and then, you know, they don't feel good at that. And then all of a sudden, yeah, they don't consider themselves an artist. Um, I think the enrichment in schools and the art and the time that art teachers are getting is, you know, sadly becoming less and less. Um, and that I've always had a struggle with being a mom. And, you know, I grew up with art every day, you know, and I, we were, we were so, uh, we were so, surrounded by it and my art teacher you know I went to her house and did after school art I did I did have more of an interest maybe than a lot of the kids but I do think it's harder now unless the parents are really involved and and taking extra steps to put art in front of their kids at home or you know or outside of school or you know because it's not as present in school as I think a lot of, of parents would like it to be and you know, I, I think it's just, it's kind of, it's kind of on the parents at this point to really make sure that the kids are, everybody is an artist, right? I mean, I, I really believe that and especially, you know, children need encouragement, you know, through whatever, sixth grade. I mean, I mean, the whole time, I mean, my parents encouraged me the whole time. I was interested in a lot, but they surely didn't ever discourage me from, from art because it might be a hard career to get into or it wasn't realistic, you know? So I think it's sort of, it's up to, it's up to, you know, the adults to make sure that they're surrounded by it and exposed to it and um, that it's part of kind of daily culture or daily, or if you travel that it's, that it's part of that, you know, just for your child's sake. Yeah, I'm with you. I think anybody that create something from nothing as an artist. So I put entrepreneurs under the umbrella of the artist because um, I think exactly. It, it, I, I wouldn't want to shrink the definition of art and creativity. I would want to expand it to more things because I think we need more of it around, exactly. not less. I think so too. I do. Well, I do. Um, if somebody wanted to learn more about your art, maybe get a hold of some of those free coloring pages. Um, what's the website? The website is, Sally, www.sally, S-A-L-L-Y, kingbenedict.com. So, sallykingbenedict.com. Good stuff. Well, Sally, and, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. They, it, it would be under the shop, so there's that free link there, and then the print will be up soon. And um, thank you so much for having me. Sure. I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, once again, that's Sally King Benedict, and that's the website as well, sallykingbenedict.com. And I'm sure you have an Instagram page. If they search under your name, there's probably stuff to find there as well. Uh, thank you. Yeah, that's a good way to stay in touch. Just the same thing, at Sally King Benedict. So <laughs> <laughs> the same thing over and over again. That's as it should be. Well, thank you for sharing your story. It's important work that the artists of the world are doing. And I don't think they're as appreciated as I'd like them to be. So I appreciate you and congratulations on all your success. Thank you so much, Lee. That means a lot. I really enjoyed it. Have a great one. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on Atlanta Business Radio.